Hey what's up guys, back again with another video in the C++ series. This time I'm going to show you how to make constants and enumerations. Alright guys, so we're on episode 9 now, we're making good progress. So I'm going to show you, like I said, um, how to make constants and enumerations. And yeah, so they're pretty simple, um, they're really cool. And you'll probably be using them in the future, not really um, right now, like right away, but you'll be using them in the future, so it's good to learn them now because, yeah, because why not? Anyway, so let's go ahead and show you how to do it. So first of all, a constant is what we'll be learning first. So constant, and a constant is basically a variable that can't change, okay? And there's different types of constants, but we're going to remain focused on the variable constants because that's the most important one. So variable constants, right? Oh, okay, so I already typed it. So variable that cannot change. So um, yeah, that's what it is. So if we want to make a variable constant, we could simply do, or actually let's make a regular variable first just to test it out. So we're gonna do int, and we're gonna make something called high score, okay? So high, oops, didn't mean to do that. Um, let's see here, high score, like that. And then we'll give it a value of about 50. So the highest score in our game that we're creating, I mean, we're not actually creating a game, but for the program, the highest score that in our game is gonna be 50. So that's what the highest score is. And let's say for some reason we wanna change this highest score, okay? So we can do that at any time by doing high score is equal to, and then just give it a new value. So like 34, we can do that easily. And then we can print out that value if we want to, right? So highest score, just like that in line to flush the console. So let's run that and see what we get. We should get 34 because we reassigned it. So 34 right there, right? So um, so that's gonna be a regular variable, but I wanna show you constants now. So if you do, if you wanna make this into a constant, we could simply do const right in front of the integer or the variable data type. It doesn't have to be integers, by the way, it could be long, it could be any data type, um, stuff like that, okay? Just any of the basic data types that we've learned already. Um, even booleans, okay? So constant integer high score is equal to 50. And then right away, we can see that this comes back with an error. It says constant, uh, it says expression must be a modifiable value. So this means that um, it's no longer modifiable, right? This um, variable here is no longer modifiable. That's because it's now a constant. And like I said, constants are variables that cannot change, okay? And they're pretty much um, available in any big programming language that you'll be using, a constant is pretty popular just like variables are okay so it cannot change so now we get an error here so we cannot reassign it basically but we can still print it out so let's try doing that and see what we get pretty cool so there we go we get 50 now right and if we ever want to change it we cannot reassign it but but instead we can just uh, change the initial value so we can change it to big value here so that's the new high score um, high score might not be a good example. There could be a better example because theoretically, theoretically in a game, you're going to want to be able to change the high score because, you know, what if someone beats the game or something like that with a new high score? So that's probably not the best example. So let me go ahead and show you a better example, okay? So in mathematics, you know, we have pi, which is 3.14 or something like that, and it goes on forever pretty much. So we could do const, or not const, let's not do a constant yet. And actually, one more thing I want to show you is that whenever you're naming constant, it's a convention. You don't have to do this, but it's a naming convention that you want to give it um, all caps. Okay, so high score. Okay, so make sure you, um, you don't have to, but make sure that you name your constants with a um, all caps. Okay, that's just what people do. And then, of course, it's um, variables are case sensitive. So we do have to change this one also. There we go. So that's just what that. Don't forget that. So now let's go ahead and show you a better example. So we'll do pi. So const pi for pi is equal to 3.14. I'm not going to go farther than that because I'm too lazy to look it up or remember. I'm, I'm not a genius. Oh, I forgot to give it a data type, by the way. So since it's a decimal, we can, even, we can either give it a float or a double. But doubles are more common, so we'll just put double just like that. There we go. So this is a good example because we know that pi in mathematics will never change. Pi is going to be always the same thing. Um, 3.14 and then you know whatever else other digits are after that but it's never going to change right so we can think of a mathematical situation like this sometimes in math you want to find the area of a circle so we could do something like this uh, first we're going to need a radius for the circle so radius uh, is equal to 5 just like that and then now we'll give it uh, let's create an area variable so long area is equal to and if you remember the radius for a circle is going to be 2 pi r I believe so 2 times pi times the radius so 2 
times pi, pi, capital pi, because it's, you know, our constant, and then radius, okay? So we know that pi is never going to change, so we can just plug it in just like that with ease, and then radius may change depending on what size of a circle you're using. But yeah, hopefully that's a good example that you can see right there in that situation. You can simply plug in pi just like that. Pretty cool, right? So we can now we can just simply do C out area in line just like that, okay? So let's run this and see what we get. And we should get a number 31, okay? So hopefully so hopefully that's the right number, but there you go. That's um, how that's a good situation in which you might want to use a constant. There's many different situations, of course, obviously, but that's just one of them. So that's constants, but uh, let me show you how to do enumerations. And enumerations are also pretty cool. Um, they're not that common. I mean, at least I haven't seen them that you know too much in programming. I've seen them in Java a few a few times whenever I'm doing like spigot programming. But other than that, um, I haven't really seen them that much. But they're important to know in case you ever do come across them or want to use them yourself. And they're pretty cool anyway. So let me just show you instead of rambling. So to create an enumeration, or actually first let me tell you what it is. An enumeration is basically just a um, they're basically variables with predefined types. Okay. So think of this. You want um, you can basically create your own variable, but you can limit the the values for the variable, right? So we've entered your right, we have the integer variable data type, or you, excuse me, data type, you can create your own data type with its own specific values, okay? So that's what we're going to do with enumerations. So back to my example, integer is a data type, right? But we can give it a value of any number, basically, um, within, you know, the range, obviously, but we can give it a number, any number, pretty much. But with enumerations, we can create our own, our own data type with only a certain number of or a certain amount of, of values basically okay so let me just go ahead and show you so enum enumerations are basically uh, variables or uh, it makes more sense to put data types honestly so data types with predefined values sorry if my keyboard sounds a little weird um i spilled root beer on my keyboard one time when i first got it on my laptop so now the the backspace key is a little sticky so it's hard to press and it sounds weird sorry about that but hopefully this uh, keyboard is more quiet for you guys instead of my loud mechanical keyboard. But anyway, so if you want to create an enumeration, you simply do enum, stands for enumerations, or enumeration. And now we can give it a name. So this is going to be the name of our data type, okay? And so, I spelled data type wrong, but whatever. So we can give it a name here. So I'm just calling it names, just like that. So we can call it names, then we open it up just like this. And now we can give it the predefined values that will be available for names. Okay, so let's just list some names here. So we'll do Henry. Bob, Billy, and make sure you have a comma after each value, okay? You don't need one on the last one, but if you're going to add another one, you want a comma before the next one, okay? So, Bobby, uh, I almost put booby for accident, and then Ricky, okay? So, uh, Henry, Bob, Billy, Bobby, and uh, Ricky, okay? Okay, so those are going to be our predefined values for the names of enumeration. So, let's go ahead and create one or see how it's used. So now we can just create a names uh, variable here. So names, and then we can say name one to give it a name is equal to, and let's try putting a random, um, you know, number or something like that. So 45, and we get an error here. It says a value of type integer cannot be used to initialize an entity of type names. So it's of type names because we just created our own data type basically. And it basically can only accept any of these. These are the predefined uh, data type values for that data type. Okay, so we can't. Um, so we can only put um, any of these, right? So we can just plug in Bobby just like that. And so now name one is equal to Bobby, okay? So that's how that works, pretty cool, right? You can only use the ones that you specify here. So that's pretty simple, but hopefully like that. So let's go and create another one. So names, if I can type it. So names, name two is equal to, and let's go ahead and say Henry. And so that's how that works. Okay, so no error there because of course Henry is one of our predefined values and they're both highlighted because they're you know related. But anyway, so now let's try printing this out and I'm gonna show you something pretty cool. So C out name one in line and then we'll just C out name two in line just like that. And so now let's let's run this, okay? Let's see what we get. And now we get, ignore the first two, so we get three and zero. And the reason we get three and zero is because when you're working with enumerations, they also get assigned a number value, an integer value, okay? So whenever you leave it default like this, whenever you don't specify a number, it's gonna go like this. Think of it as an array. Well, I haven't showed you arrays yet, but think of it as an array, okay? So zero, one, two, three. 
and four. Okay, so this, so the way this works is that it starts, the first one's gonna be zero. It's called zero based because it starts at zero and you're gonna be seeing this with arrays once I teach you that. But this is zero here and then the next one's gonna be the next highest number and it's just gonna go up from there, okay? One by one, right? But, the, but just remember the first one's always gonna be zero. So that's why when we open up the console here, we can see that it said three because uh, Bobby is equal to three, as you can see here. And then for Ricky, when we printed out Ricky, or Henry, so excuse me, Henry, when we printed out Henry, we got zero because Henry is also equal to zero. So if we really want to, we don't have to type this, um, these actual names, just like this, we could also do it like this. So names, and then inside these parentheses here, we can provide the number or the integer that corresponds with the enumeration. So if you want to select Billy, for example, we could simply put two in there because Hen uh, Billy corresponds with the number two, right? So now we can print this out and we'll get um, similar It'll still work, basically. So yeah, we get two here now because it stands for um, Billy, right? But you can also specify custom numbers. You can give them custom numbers instead of having the default zero, one, two, three, like four, five, six, seven, you know, like that. We can give it a custom number. So let's try doing this. So we're gonna do enumeration or enum, I mean, um, colors. And by the way, the things inside of the enumeration are gonna be called enumerators, okay? So anyway, let's give some colors here. So red, blue, black and pink and we'll do one more we'll do purple okay so these are our predefined values for our colors data type here so let's go ahead and create a colors variable so colors color one is equal to and we're going to say purple okay and then we're going to print out the value of purple see what we get or color one and see what we get okay so let's run this here and at the bottom we see four okay so zero one two, three, four, and if you hover over it, it says four. It says the number that corresponds with it if you hover, so that's pretty cool. But anyway, we get four because it's, you know, we're counting up obviously, right? But we can also give it custom numbers. So if we start here, we could do red is equal to 45. And now let's see what happens if we run this. <laughs> so now we get 49. That's because it starts at 45, and then it starts adding it goes up by one each time, of course, like it did before. So and since it starts at 45, it's just gonna go up to 49 when it hits purple, and that's how we get that. So if we were gonna do blue, it'd be 46. If it was gonna be pink, it'd be 48. And then, so we, we could also change, we can change any of them, actually. We can change uh, 67 right here. So if we run this, that means that purple is gonna be 68, 69, okay? So this is gonna be 45, this is gonna be 46, this is gonna be 67, this is gonna be 68, and this is gonna be 69, okay? So it's basically just gonna count up unless you give it a custom value, okay? So pretty cool, hopefully you like that. Let's rerun this because it didn't work. And as you can see here, like I said, it gives you 69 because 67, 68, 69, it's just gonna count up by, count up by one every time. So yeah, hopefully you like that. Enumerations are pretty cool. So yeah, if you have any questions about what I showed you today with the constants and enumerations, just go ahead and let me know in the comment section below. I'll be glad to help you. Also, we have a Discord link in the description below. Description below where you can click the Discord link and then join our Discord server. We got about 200 people inside of there. A bunch of the people in there will help you if you need any help. Um, I'll be in there sometimes. I try my best, but I'm kind of busy. Actually, I'm not that busy. I just gradu graduated from high school, so I'll, I'll be on more to help you guys if you want to talk or anything like that or need help. But yeah, you don't have to ask for help. You can just join if you want to talk to us. But but besides that, all the code from today's episode is going to be in the description below. So make sure you click that and bookmark it for future use. And uh, yeah, so if you like this video, leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. And peace.